American cities have too much parking. Why take the downtown area of a city and put a surface level parking lot? It's quite possibly the single worst use for this land. But why is it that these surface level parking lots exist in virtually every American city? And what caused American cities to finally start removing them? Then stacked layer upon layer in modern fireproof structures, engineered for easy access and maximum use of downtown space. One of the main reasons for the proliferation of surface parking lots in American cities is the rise of car culture in the mid-20th century. As more and more Americans began to own cars, cities responded by building more and more parking lots to accommodate the growing number of vehicles. This caused a huge problem. This car-centric design makes cities undesirable. It made it so that cities' downtown areas were no longer a place to live and enjoy, but instead a place you drove your car into to go to work and then left. However, cities are finally starting to grapple with their parking lot problem, and new developments are taking shape across the country in an effort to revitalize city centers and create spaces that people want to spend time in. I want to take a moment to thank Liquid Pink Coffee for making this video possible. Liquid Pink Coffee is a luxury coffee company focused on discovering and sharing the world's finest coffees, delivering them right to your door. Featuring five distinctive coffees, they all taste like they could be served at your favorite local coffee shop. And they truly have a coffee for everyone. Their Park Avenue blend is a high quality take on the classic breakfast blend, while their Layover Robusta blend is a blend of high caffeine coffee beans to power you through the day. Using the link in the description, you can try Liquid Pink Coffee for yourself, and you'll receive free shipping on your entire order. Now, let's get back to the video. First, let's look at just how much space different US cities are dedicating solely to parking. New York City has around 1.8 million parking spaces, which is around 0.6 parking spaces per household. Philadelphia has 2.1 million parking spaces, which is around 3.6 parking spaces per household. And then Seattle has 1.5 million, which is around 5 parking spaces per household. You get the point. In most US cities, there are more parking spaces than there are cars. Those parking spots are just wasting space, and not generating nearly any tax revenue for the city. And many of these lots were actually mandated by cities themselves. Cities establish parking minimums, which are regulations that require a certain number of spots to be built depending on the size of the building. These parking lot laws left cities with significantly more parking than is needed leading to half-empty lots and garages scattered around cities. Now, I want to address a common argument surrounding removing parking from city centers. Without space to park cars, city centers would decline as it would be harder for people from the suburbs to drive into the city. Now, the way some North American cities are designed as of right now, there definitely needs to be some level of parking availability in the downtown area. Many cities still have predominantly car-centric designs. However, this issue is a result of a lack of transit and an abundance of highway access to city centers. Now, I'm not saying that American cities should remove all parking. However, that still doesn't mean that cities need to have more spaces than there are cars. And they definitely don't need to have surface-level parking lots. There are numerous better ways to go about this issue of transit and parking. Investing in public transit is a great solution, and it's a concept a couple of North American cities have tried, but a lot of them seem to focus on less. Yet, it's a very viable solution to this problem. In plain and simple terms, if you have less demand for parking in cities, then there's more space to dedicate to actual buildings and useful spaces. And adequate public transit doesn't just mean a couple of buses running in the city limits. It has to serve as a useful service that takes people from the places they live to the destinations they would typically drive to. Many North American cities are very limited in the places that are accessible to public transit. 
and most of the time, suburbs are not even connected by transit to the downtown area. And yes, public transit can be a viable option to connect suburbs to the downtown. There are some examples of trains connecting the suburbs to the city in New York and Chicago. Chicago's Metro Line allows suburbanites to hop on a train and get to the downtown area without the need to park. Now, cities do still need some parking, but integrating it into mixed-use building developments and putting it underground is significantly better for the city than having a surface-level lots. Many local governments are starting to eliminate their parking minimums that started this whole surface-level parking problem in the first place. By requiring less parking, it leads to cheaper construction costs, which in turn means more affordable rents. It also makes it easier for land to be developed into new housing, which can help alleviate the ongoing national housing shortage. Statistics show that a parking garage adds about 17% to the average rent. For example, if you have an apartment with a $2,000 monthly rent, without parking, that same apartment could be offered at $1,660. Focusing on transit-oriented development, which I talked about in my last video on Los Angeles' car dependence, can farther decrease the need for parking. Building housing near public transit and placing businesses and spaces that people need to visit along these transit routes can help eliminate the need for a car. So what's causing this trend in cities to remove parking lots? Well, this shift away from parking started about a decade ago, as people began to move closer to downtown for jobs and amenities. This has led to denser, more walkable neighborhoods becoming more desirable, meaning less land has to be set aside for cars. Parking lots are actually not all bad. They present an opportunity for cities. It's essentially an open plot of land with huge potential. They're an incredible opportunity to build more housing, restaurants, offices, and shopping right in the city center. As more and more people want to live in the urban part of the city, it means that these surface level parking lots and garages are no longer the highest and best use for the land. Developers can see huge potential in these lots, generating large economic wins for the city. Parking lots don't generate even close to as much tax revenue as a high rise, dense development building does. So, it's in the city's best interest to greenlight these developments and get rid of their parking lots.